In this video, we are going to use the ideal gas law, which is PV equals nRT, and we're going to rearrange that equation and do a substitution to go from moles to grams, and we'll see the mathematical relationship that relates density to a substance's molar mass. So remember, the molar mass of any formula is the atomic masses from the periodic table, so that gives us grams per mole and density is defined as mass over volume. So what I'm going to do is take the ideal gas law and divide both sides by V. I'm trying to get this N over V all by itself, the moles per volume. So if I do that, that's gone, and then divide both sides by RT. I'm going to put the N over V on the left-hand side of the equation. So N divided by V is pressure P divided by RT. And then if we remember, if we have moles, that's what N stands for, is moles. If we have moles, we can always multiply by the molar mass, which is grams per mole, and that will get us from moles to grams. So multiplying by the molar mass is the same as multiplying both sides by capital M. So if I put the grams per mole over here, the unit, grams per mole, I multiply this side by grams per mole, and I multiply this side by grams per mole, except now I'm going to use the symbol for molar mass, then the moles are going to cancel. So gram, the mass in grams divided by the volume in liters, is equal to pressure times molar mass divided by RT. And then grams per volume is what density is. So there is a relationship between density and the molar mass of a gas. And so that is the equation there. And depending on what R constant we use, typically we use 0.08206. That is the liter atmosphere numerator. So if we use this R value, then our pressure needs to be in atmospheres and our uh, temperature always has to be in Kelvin. And then the molar mass, of course, depends on the formula. And so whatever gas we are looking at, for example, if it's oxygen, oops, not a lead, oxygen's molar mass, O2, for oxygen, then the molar mass would be 32 grams per mole. So this is a very simple plug and chug type of equation. We could solve for any gas's density. The units that we get for that will be grams per liter. Typically, densities are often in grams per milliliter, but since gases take up so much space, we get better numbers if we use grams per liter. And for this R constant that we're using, the liter will be built into that. If we rearrange this equation, so we could solve for the molar mass. So if we're solving for molar mass, we want to multiply both sides by RT. And so we would get density times the gas constant R times the temperature. And then to get the M all by itself, we divide both sides by P, pressure. So this may be used to help identify what a gas, what gas we might have. So densities are not that difficult to measure. And if we're doing an experiment at room temperature and atmospheric pressure, those values are also very easy to obtain. So if we thought perhaps a gas might be nitrogen. If we knew the density, if we calculated the molar mass and it was 28 grams per mole, 
from the formula, we couldn't say for sure that the gas would be nitrogen, but since nitrogen does weigh 28 grams per mole, that would definitely be a possibility. But for the most part, uh, these equations, because density and molar mass and molarity, moles per volume, are related, the ideal gas law just gives us two more simple formulas that may be useful in determining the properties of a gas.